What is the blueprint for an all-star game? The sketches call for the right combination of players whose abilities will merge to create a dynamic structure. The East, cold, strong, and determined, where the game evolved on the streets in the shadows of its architecture. Iverson goes for three, big out of bounds. Wild and full of style, where the structural design feeds its creativity. Oh, what a move by Galvin! Kevin Garnett is taking over this game. Tim Duncan again. It's all a late go served up. Great shot, Brady, putting on her. By virtue of its grand design, the game is greater than the sum of its parts. The fadeaway! Truly magical moments will be constructed on the largest scale for all to see. A proven blueprint formulated by the fathers of the game. That is what TNT has planned tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, here to perform John Denver's classic tribute to the beautiful state of Colorado. Welcome Lava recording artist, Toby Lightman. He was born in the summer of his 27th year. Coming home to a place he'd never been before He left yesterday behind him You might say he was born again You might say he found the key to every door But the Colorado Rocky Mountain High I've seen it rain and fire in the sky but the shadow from the starlight is softer than a lullaby. Rocky Mountain High, Colorado. A Rocky Mountain High, Colorado. came to the mountains his life is four away on a road and hanging by a song well the strings already broken and he doesn't really care cause it changes fast and it don't last too long but the Colorado Rocky Mountain High Seen it rain and fire in the sky, but the shadow from the starlight is softer than a lullaby. Rocky Mountain High, Colorado, a Rocky Mountain High, Colorado, Rocky Mountain High, well, Colorado. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Destiny's Child.
Let's meet the 2005 NBA All-Stars. First up for the Eastern Conference, the trainer from the Miami Heat is Ron Culp. The assistant coaches from the Miami Heat are Bob McAdoo, Ron Rothstein, and Eric Spolstra. The head coach for the East, named as an all-star coach for the first time from the Miami Heat, Stan Van Gundy. And now, the players for the Eastern Conference. 6'6 guard from the Boston Celtics, four-time NBA All-Star, Paul Pierce. Seven three center and two time all star from the Cleveland Cavaliers, Zedrunas Ilgauskas. From the NBA champion, Detroit Pistons, six nine center and three time all star, Ben Wallace. From the Indiana Pacers, four-time All-Star forward, Jermaine O'Neal. From the Miami Heat, a 6-4 guard making his first All-Star appearance, Dwayne Wade. At 6-3, first time all-star guard from the Washington Wizards, Gilbert Arenas. So from the Washington Wizards in his first all-star appearance, 6'9 forward, Antoine Jamison. Now the starting lineup for the Eastern Conference All-Stars. From the New Jersey Nets, making his sixth consecutive all-star appearance, 6'6 six, six forward, Vince Carter! Six, eight forward from the Orlando Magic with his sixth All-Star selection, Grant Hill! Making his sixth straight All-Star appearance, six-foot guard from the Philadelphia 76ers, Allen Iverson. At 
6 8 guard from the Cleveland Cavaliers, voted as a starter in his first All-Star appearance, LeBron James! From the Miami Heat, the 2004 All-Star Game MVP, the top All-Star vote getter in the East with over 2.4 million votes, 7-1 center and 12-time All-Star, Shaquille O'Neal! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the 2005 NBA Eastern Conference All-Stars! The 2005 Western Conference All-Stars. The trainer for the Western Conference from your Denver Nuggets, Jim Gillen. The assistant coaches from the San Antonio Spurs are Mike Budenholzer, PJ Carlissimo, and Don Newman. The head coach representing the San Antonio Spurs for the first time as an NBA All-Star coach, the 2003 NBA Coach of the Year, Greg Popovich. Now, the players for the Western Conference. Seven-foot forward and four-time All-Star from the Dallas Mavericks, Dirk Nowitzki. Six seven forward and two time all star from the Phoenix Suns, Sean Marion. Also from the Phoenix Suns, 6'3 guard and three-time All-Star, Steve Nash. Making his first All-Star appearance, 
the 6'10 forward from the Phoenix Suns, Amare Stoudemire. Also playing in his first All-Star game from the San Antonio Spurs, 6'6 guard, Manu Ginobili. Six five guard and five time all star for the Seattle Supersonics, Ray Allen. Also from the Seattle Supersonics, in his first all star appearance, six ten forward, Rashard Lewis. Now, the starting lineup. Seven foot forward and seven time All-Star from the San Antonio Spurs, Tim Duncan. Six eleven forward from the Minnesota Timberwolves, making his eighth straight All-Star appearance, Kevin Garnett. Six seven guard and seven time all star from the Los Angeles Lakers, Kobe Bryant. At six eight, five time NBA all star guard from the Houston Rockets, Tracy McGrady. The 7-6 center from the Houston Rockets with the most single-season All-Star votes in the history of the NBA, three-time All-Star, Yao Ming! The Western Conference NBA All-Stars! gentlemen let's have one more round of applause for all the 2005 nba all-stars <laughs> ladies and gentlemen please rise for the singing of the national anthems of the united states and canada performing the canadian anthem welcome five-time grammy nominated platinum recording artist ontario canada native also married to Eastern Conference All-Star, Grant Hill, Tamiya. Oh, Canada, our home and native land, true patriot love in all the sun's command. With glowing hearts we see thee rise The true north strong and free From far and wide, O oh Canada We stand on guard for thee God land glorious and free oh Canada we stand on guard for thee oh Canada we stand on 
Please remain standing for the presentation of colors by the NORAD U.S. NORTHCOM Joint Service Color Guard and members of the United States Air Force Academy Choir. Please welcome two-time NBA champion, 10-time All-Star, one of the NBA's 50 greatest, and Naval Academy graduate, the Admiral David Robinson. Thank you. In honor of our armed forces in service around the world, this All-Star weekend, the NBA and the USO have teamed up to host more than 300 members of our military and their families. We honor... We, we, we honor their bravery, their commitment, their dedication, and their service to our country. And in that spirit, here to sing the Star Spangled Banner is the award-winning United States Air Force Academy Choir. City, we welcome you back to Denver, Colorado for the centerpiece of All-Star Weekend. It is the 54th NBA All-Star Game. An SRO crowd out of the 19,000 turning out of the Pepsi Center. This is the second time this mid-season classic has taken place here in Denver back in 1984 at the old McNichols Arena. The East beat the West in an overtime game. Hi, everybody. Marv Albert, along with Doug Collins and Steve Kerr. We have Greg Sager, David Aldridge working the sidelines, and we are just about ready to go. Here's a look at the McDonald's starting lineups so for the Eastern Conference All-Stars. Up front, Vince Carter of the Nets. He's played exceptional basketball since the trade from Toronto. Grant Hill has made a remarkable comeback from the five ankle surgeries. Shaquille O'Neal sparking Miami to the best record in the East. In the backcourt, Allen Iverson of the 76ers. The answer has been on a tear as of late. And LeBron James leading the Cavs for a dramatic turnaround to third best record in the East. In the West, Tim Duncan of the Spurs, two time most valuable player. Kevin Garnett of the T Wolves, Minnesota struggled. Kevin averaging, though, 22 14. Uh, the center is Yao Ming of the Rockets, his third All Star game. And at the guards, Kobe Bryant of the Lakers back from that sprained right ankle and Tracy McGrady of Houston who has helped propel the Rockets to eight straight wins. Tracy averaging 25 points and six assists. The officials, Jack Neese, Ken Bauer, Bill Spooner, and uh, 
Doug, now you've coached the East All-Stars to a victory back in 1997 in Cleveland. What is the most difficult aspect of coaching a group of All-Stars? Well, we spoke to both coaches before the game, Marv. They both said minutes, trying to divide the minutes. You know, Greg Popovich told us he spent five hours last night trying to devise a schedule where he can get guys minutes so everybody gets a chance to play. Then with eight minutes to go in the game, the game's going to be competitive, and that's when you're going to see coaches go for the win. And, you know, it's amazing because Greg Popovich never spent more than five minutes worrying about <laughs> my playing time, but, you know, this is what it's all about. All 12 of these guys on each roster deserve to play and show what they can do and get out and enjoy this game. Stan Van Gundy told us that he's so concerned about everyone getting close to an equal amount of playing time, he said, so I'll probably antagonize all 12 players. <laughs> The West with three straight wins. They've taken four of the last five. They won last year in Los Angeles. Overall, the East has won 33. The West has won 20. And this is an all-star game that presents the, the NBA's faces of the future. Seven players, 25 or younger, taking part. LeBron, Dwayne Wade, Gilbert Arenas, Manu Ginobili, Amari Stoudemire, Rashard Lewis, and Yao Ming. Barb, I think what you'll see here early in this game, too, when you look at the starting lineups, we did this in our open, the disparity of the Western Conference to size and the East. So what both coaches will probably do, they'll go to their benches early because when the East comes in actually with bigger players, the West comes in with smaller. So they're going to try to get the matchups out there uh, so that they'll be able to, to defend the way they'd like to. That's amazing because if you look at it, the West's guards are bigger <laughs> than the East forwards. Uh, but in a game like this, as you know, Doug, it's up and down. I actually think Grant Hill is going to have a big advantage early on. He'll be guarded by either Garnett or Tim Duncan. I think this game could be pretty fun for Grant. And we're keeping a, a close eye on the, the handshakes between the East and the West. Kobe and Shaq did not come <laughs> together. Incidentally, they did not have dinner plans here in Denver <laughs> over the weekend. I thought we'd get a perfunctory greeting. Well, Steve and I didn't eat dinner either, so hopefully we'll be able to get through this telecast tonight, Marv. I don't know. There's a lot of tension here in the post. <laughs> Although you have been on talking terms. Yes, we have. Yes, we have. All right, it is Yao Ming and Shaquille O'Neal. And this 54th NBA All-Star game is underway. As LeBron James controls for the East being played here at the start by Tracy McGrady. Allen Iverson with the step on Kobe Bryant. And here is Vince Carter for three. Now you can see right away Tim Duncan guarding Carter. Very unfamiliar with having to cover a guy who's going to shoot a lot of three-pointers. So the matchup's already a factor here. Tim Duncan being played by Vince Carter on a switch. Carter now to Kevin Garnett of the T-Wolves. Garnett to Duncan, not able to handle. Grant Hill for Carter of the Nets. James passing on the three, and as Yao Ming steps away, he scores! Well, there's the mismatch that you talk about. Anytime there's a turnover and the East runs, the West is going to have a difficult time finding their man. Yao Ming that time was caught on LeBron James. Here is Garnett. That's a deep two for Kevin Garnett. Minnesota only 27-27 and 27 after winning 58 games last season going to the Western Conference finals and Kevin Garnett has been playing hurt as of late Garnett leads the NBA in rebounds and picks off his first of the night it's gonna be interesting to see how many minutes he plays as you see Brian with a beautiful feed from Yao Ming but Kevin McHale apparently contacted Greg Popovich before the game said look my guy's been hurting a little bit take it easy not too many minutes so I wouldn't expect much more than 15 20 minutes for Garnett Hello, Neil Wheeling on Yao Ming. Rick Popovich also uh, telling us that Tim Duncan, bothered by a knee and an ankle and a hip, uh, might see limited minutes. The same for Steve Nash. Although Steve says, let's see how it goes during the course of the game. McGrady with room. Yes. And both clubs have come out firing. Well, Tracy McGrady's game has really picked up over the last six weeks. It took he and... Yao Ming a little bit time to get together. They made a great trade. David Wesley, Bob Sur has been terrific. John Barry's helped them. They now are playing great basketball. And they've got a great matchup coming up Tuesday night in San Antonio. They've beaten the Spurs the last couple of times. That'll be fun to watch. Carter from way downtown. 
and handled by McGrady talking about the Rockets after that slow start they have now soared with eight straight wins they're within a game of fifth place Sacramento in that uh, Western Conference race Iverson able to chase it down how about Iverson who has been on a tear 60 point game recently a couple of 50 plus games Grant Hill Grant Hill back after a four-year hiatus due to the five ankle surgeries. He says his, his legs are 29 years old. His ankle is 42 years old. <laughs> Carter off the steal. Iverson saving the pass. Iverson met by Bryant. And the pass picked off by McGrady. Reaching steal by O'Neal. Well, he thought Hill would be a set for the lob. Lots of ball movement. They can't find a shot. Now Carter spins his way, but it's stolen by Bryant. And Kobe slows it down, throws off the backboard, but way off the mark. That's one of the things in the All-Star game. If the game gets sloppy with a lot of turnovers, that's one thing as a coach you talk to the guys. You know, make the simple play. We want to have some fun, but let's not get a turnover fest. Oh, nice two on one. Now that is fundamental basketball with the the big fundamental as Shaquille O'Neal likes to uh, call Tim Duncan able to finish it off. Here's James for three. I think one of the big problems in All-Star game is actually overpassing. You know, guys don't want to shoot every time and they want to make the spectacular pass. It leads to a lot of turnovers. Well, here's the two big guys on the break. Probably two of the most fundamentally sound guys in the game. Garnett and Duncan. The nice finish. Grant Hill could do nothing about that. Four minutes gone by, and the game is tied at eight. Garnett, like Shaq got a piece of it. Ron James playing through a case of the flu and a twisted ankle. Carter. How about the play of Vince Carter during the last month? Ever since the trade, he has been absolutely spectacular. I don't know if he deserved to be an all-star before the trade, but since he's absolutely earned his way into this game. And that net team, if you think if they would have a healthy Richard Jefferson, you've got Jason Kidd back now to go with uh, Vince Carter. You see his numbers, almost 10 more points a game, so he's been spectacular. The Nets still have a chance to make the playoffs even after the slow start. Oh, oh, oh. to the left hand and banking it home. It's one of the amazing things about Kobe. Every year, he works on something new for his game. Remember? A couple of years ago, he started uh, getting it down low on the block. Then he goes to the left hand. He, all great players add something in the offseason. West 10, the East 8. <laughs> serves up a facial on Yao Ming. It counts. And the foul. This is the old Steve Smith move. Remember? Oh, yeah. Close baseline, left hand, a little fake spin, and then right around the big fella with the slam. I used to have a fine. We would go through our pregame talk, and if we got beat on that move by Steve Smith, our guys got yeah. fined because he would try to pull it every game on you. Well, I played with Steve in San Antonio, and anytime he had a young guy on him, a rookie who was totally unsuspecting, we'd sit on the bench and go, oh, here it comes, here it comes, and he'd get it every time. Substitutions for the West, Steve Nash and Sean Marion have checked in. Shaquille O'Neal at the line. What's Shaq going to here? What is this? <laughs> Don Nelson they, teach him that? You said they break out something new every year. <laughs> Ari Stoudemire has also come on, so three Phoenix Suns on the floor. Here is Duncan. So Iverson raced by, and Stoudemire lost the grip. Iverson in the open floor with the lead. Iverson to James. And a bad pass, so the East will get it back. You know, nobody's really talking about Allen Iverson as an MVP candidate, and that's because his team has a mediocre record. But he's having arguably one of his best years. He's playing point guard. His assists are up. Minutes, points. He's having a terrific year. It's just the Sixers are mediocre. And you know what? 60 points is 60 points. Yes. I don't care what game you're in. That's incredible, especially for a man his size. Iverson averaging just under 30 a game, which leads the NBA, plus seven and a half assists, which is among the leaders. Duncan to the left hand. The game is tied at 12. A look away pass from James. Carter had no angle. Bryant lost it. And 
fouled by O'Neal. Oh, Shaq would have loved to have oh. Kobe's pocket on that break. You could just see the right. smile was getting ready to, to, to show up on his face. Substitutions, Dwayne Wade of Miami, Jermaine O'Neal of Indiana, checking in for the East. And here's that early substitution you talked about, Doug. You get Jermaine O'Neal in the game now. Now you've got more traditional matchups. O'Neal on Stoudemire, Shaquille on Duncan. Nash using the pick. And here's Duncan with a rare three. That's incredible. I mean, seven feet tall. He steps out, shoots a three, takes over down on the block, shoots the bank shot better than anybody, and as you said, Doug, maybe the most fundamentally sound big guy in the NBA. Fast start for Duncan. He has seven points. LeBron James, Allen Iverson now in the backcourt. Shaq is up front with O'Neal. Oh, what a play. And Iverson is able to finish. I think that's the best part of LeBron James' game, his passing, his vision, his ability to see the floor. And Stoudemire right back. You can only imagine what we're going to see from LeBron James when he gets some better shooters on the floor. Yeah. I mean, his assists where they are right now, he'll get three or four more a game just by finding the open man and knocking down the shot. All right, you better believe that Jim Paxson will be working on that in the offseason because I think that's the next step for the Cavaliers. Here's Jermaine O'Neal. Nash and Bryant now in the backcourt. Nash gets it to Stoudemire. Stoudemire with an impossible angle shot. Marion. <laughs> Nash with nowhere to go. Perhaps we'll see the soccer move by Steve Nash. That was a soccer move by Amari Stoudemire. Hit him right in the forehead. Well, you talk about the ability of these players to do wonderful things. LeBron James in the post, a little bounce pass. Iverson on the receiving end, a little reverse. And the East off to a good start. Welcome back to the 2005 NBA All-Star Game in Denver. And with me, 10-time All-Star David Robinson, who this weekend is the host of 300 members of the U.S. military and their families. You've always been involved in the community, but what has this weekend meant to you and our troops? Oh, it's been awesome. These guys are fantastic. See, I got my, my boys behind me. Don't mess with me today, Craig. <laughs> I tell you what, it's been a great weekend for them. I think you can top it off with Destiny's Child singing Soldier. I know how excited they were for that. I think they had to hold them back. They were all going to run down on the floor when she started singing about soldiers. She needed one. We got some over here. After being so involved, you won the NBA's Community Service Award, two-time MVP. What is so important about giving back to the community? Well, I mean, you know, they're the ones that make you. You know, the fans are out there. They're supporting you day in and day out. Uh, you know, you can't be an NBA star without these people sitting in the stands. And so when your community supports you like that, you have an obligation to give back. And speaking of the fans, David and the NBA have formed a new website. America supports you, allowing the fans to log on to wish the troops their best. Just log on to www.americansupportyou.mil. Mark. All right, thank you, Greg. Ray Allen of Seattle. Dirk Nowitzki of Dallas have checked in. Here's Jermaine O'Neal. So the West now leads at 19-17. Tim Duncan sitting down. Seven points, five rebounds for Tim Duncan. And here is Allen for three. An effortless, quick release by Ray Allen of the Sonics. The sweetest stroke in the NBA. And Marby, he shoots it deep with so little effort. It's just such a pretty shot. Five-point lead for the Western Conference All-Stars. Nice play by Nowitzki to knock it aside. Fun to see Nash and Nowitzki back together again, although the turnover there from Nash, but those two guys have been incredible together the last six years in Dallas. Oh, what a play by Iverson. The steal goes the length of the court and sets it up for Shaq, but here's Marion right back as the East did not get back. Well, you were reading all the stuff before the game, and Iverson said, Iverson said his dream was to be able to be on the break and get Shaq for a dunk, but we just saw it. And Dwayne Wade gets inside. What a second season for Dwayne Wade. The fifth overall pick back in 2003. Right back from Sean Marion. Doug, what did you say last week? You said Marion, Stoudemire, Johnson, they should all take Nash out to dinner about once Every a night. week. I mean, Every it's night. It's incredible what he's done for that team. Like a quarterback with his linemen. Iverson with the step. Stoudemire on the break. O'Neal gets back. And O'Neal able to break it up. Well, this is something that Phoenix fans are getting awfully familiar with. Steve Nash on the break, feeding Sean Marion for the slam. Back 
back in Denver. Let's check out tonight's Ford flashback. Well, the last time that Grant Hill played in an All-Star game was in Oakland back in the year 2000. 7.3 rebounds, 5 assists, victory by the West. And Doug, this is a guy who's made a remarkable comeback. Five ankle surgeries, several near comebacks, a total of 281 missed games from 2000 through 2004. Well, Marv, it, it warms my heart. First of all, I've known Grant since he was a junior at Duke. My son Chris played with him down there. Then I coached him in Detroit, where he was third in the MVP voting the one year behind Carl Malone and Michael Jordan. And you know what? When you have all these surgeries, it takes so much out of you, the rehabilitation. For him to have this kind of competitiveness, Steve, and be back like this is a great story. Oh, interesting story from that All-Star game in 2000. Grant actually forgot his contacts, and, and, he, and he, that's one of the reasons he had a very subpar night. He was asked about it afterwards. He said, next time I'm going to be more aggressive. Well, as he has found out, you don't know what next time is going to be. So great to see him after all these years back in this game again. And Waddles who just checked in with Gilbert Arenas, able to score on that put back now how many pairs of contacts did he say he brought for tonight's yeah. game Joe, joking around he said he i got about four or five over there on the sideline he brought some backups <laughs> west 28 east 23 two minutes to play in this first quarter Marv albert doug collins steve kerr craig sager david aldridge working the sidelines ron james not able to hit ray allen on it mari stoudemire Stottlemyre forcing the issue, and he's called for the charge. Let's check in with David Aldridge. David? Marv, you know, Ray Allen and the Sonics are having an outstanding season, but there's a problem. They have eight free agents at the end of the year. He's obviously the most notable one. He's been negotiating with the team for six months trying to get a new contract done. He's told them that he'd be willing to take less than the $95 million maximum that they could give him. But after those six months, the two sides still don't have a deal. He told me the other day that he's starting to have some doubts that a deal is going to get done in Seattle. And while he won't break off negotiations during the regular season, he said he has no compulsion to stay in Seattle if he does become a free agent. Marv? Sounds like negotiating publicly. <laughs> And it's a shame, too, because Seattle's having such a great year. I always appreciate it when guys just say, look, no comment. I'm not going to talk about my financial situation. Wayne Wade gets inside to bring the East within three. Mono Ginobili of the San Antonio Spurs, who has had a terrific season, has come on for the first time. Here's Allen for three. This is a great shooting team that the West has on the floor now. Davitsky, Allen, Richard Lewis, Mono Ginobili to go with Stoudemire. This is a good group. West with a six-point lead, final minute of the first quarter. Gilbert Arenas and the Wizards not able to hit. Nowitzki is on it. It's one of the things he does best. Get the rebound and just push the ball. Creates a lot of mismatches at the other end for Dallas's opponents. Nowitzki with the quick release. And he's more settled this year. Last year they had Antoine Jameson, they had Antoine Walker. They were trying to get all three guys playing time. They get Dampier now, he's the center. Nowitzki settled in as the power forward. His numbers are all up and Dallas is playing wonderfully. Ron James, yes, and the foul, able to switch hands in midair. And he draws the foul, so the West with a 33-27 lead. This is fun. This is a lot of fun. I'm, I'm loving watching Manu Ginobili play. He's just gotten in the ball game, but what a story he is. And so many great first-time All-Stars here tonight. It's a lot of fun to see. Mark, how about this? Seven players in this game, 25 and under, only four players over 30. You talk about the future being beautiful for the NBA. You got some great young players, and we're seeing this on display today. Three second differential between the game clock and the shot clock. Ginobili guarded by Arenas. And with Nash as the only pure point guard on this West squad, Ginobili's going to play a lot there tonight. Here's Nowitzki from downtown. Final seconds. Oh, good play. Apparently not good enough, Ginobili pointing out. Yeah, no, that was a that was a clean deflection. LeBron James able to bang it off for Ginobili. 2.6 to go in the quarter. Here's Wade. So that's the end of the first here in Denver. It's the West 33 and the East 27. Tim Duncan, the high point man, seven points along with five rebounds. We're back in Denver, Colorado, the home of the Denver Nuggets for this 54th NBA All-Star Game. I know 
Some of us have had busy weeks, Steve Kerr in particular. <laughs> but LeBron James, an active guy all week long, starting Wednesday night in the game against the, the Hawks. James with 28 points and a victory for Cleveland Thursday night of Minneapolis, suffering from a, a touch of the flu. Minnesota beat Cleveland. James did have 26 points in a, in a loss Friday night. The Godmilk Rookie Challenge. LeBron with 20 points and a victory by the uh, sophomores. And uh, then last night, LeBron did pass on the slam dunk competition and uh, came to the arena as a, as a spectator. Marvin coaching in the rookie sophomore game the year before and not being a very competitive game. I thought what the guys did Friday night, the way they played, set the tone for this whole All-Star weekend. Followed up last night with a great night here today. This could be one of the better All-Star weekends in a long time, and I thought it started on Friday night. How about Josh Smith last night? That was one of the most oh. amazing performances we've seen in a long time in the dunk contest. Yes, Josh for the Hawks taking the title in spectacular fashion. But Amari Stoudemire with teammate Steve yeah. Nash showing his soccer skill. Second quarter is underway. It's the West 33, the East 27. Allen with the lead for Yao. Yao on the follow. Yao with another rebound. <laughs> Guys just padding his all-star stats. Good idea, though. Dump the next one. He tried to finger roll. Oh, Dwayne Wade over Dirk Nowitzki, but could not get it to fall. Ray Allen, Manu Ginobili in the backcourt with Charlotte Lewis, Yao Ming, Dirk Nowitzki up front. Lewis trying to get inside, and a foul is called. Ken Maurer makes the call. It is a hack on Dwayne Wade. Well, what a great story, Richard Lewis. You think back of that night in draft uh, when he didn't get drafted until the second round. He's worked himself to be an all-star, and very rewarding. A $1.9 million bonus this year for making that all-star team. And Nate McMillan telling us a, a couple of weeks back as Allen fires and hits another three. It's his third three of the night. Nate McMillan saying when he informed Richard Lewis after a practice well, about two weeks ago that he had been named to the All-Star squad, all his teammates were... Uh, in, in emotional fashion, we're really happy for well, Rashard. And, and I love the fact that, as you see Wallace lay it in, I love the fact that the teams that are doing well have been rewarded this All-Star Weekend. You see Ray Allen and Rashard Lewis. Seattle's had one of the best seasons of any team in the league. And, of course, Washington with Arenas and Jamison. Great to see teams rewarded for their good play. Here's Yao Ming with a, a series of moves, and the West has opened up an 11-point bulge. Let's check it with Craig Sager. Craig? Well, Doug was talking about that 1998 draft when Rashard Lewis was passed over in the first round. His hometown, Houston Rockets, had three picks in the first round. He was all but assured that he was going to be one of them. However, they passed all three times. I talked to him yesterday. I said, do you remember who they drafted? He says, I remember it like yesterday. Michael Dickerson was 14th, Bryce Drew 16th, and Mersar Turkan was 18th, none of whom are still in the league. And he, he mentioned those names in rapid-fire fashion. <laughs> He's been thinking about it. Here's Lewis. Right on cue, Rashard Lewis. Well, he's got a wonderful game because he can make the three-point shot, but he's so quick on the perimeter that big guys can't handle it. Then he takes the smaller guys down on the block where he can really post up. I think that asset of being in the low post for him is really what separates Seattle from a lot of the other teams, and it gives them all those three-point shots. Arena's not able to hit Lewis with the rebound. We've been talking about the Sonics, and they are certainly one of the surprise teams of the season. 35-15 and 15 to lead the, the Northwest Division. Once again, a foul is called this time. It's Ben Wallace. Here comes Shaquille O'Neal. Shaq will check in, as will Tracy McGrady. Mato Ginobili will sit down. Hill O'Neal, three of three from the field, six points, three block shots, so he'll match up with Yao Ming. Look at this, a set play. Doug, we talked to the coaches, they, they said before the game, we each added about, oh, three plays or so. That's the first time I've seen anybody run any of them. That's the old NBA single double play. When you win in doubt, just go single double. Oh, Wallace not able to hit on the slam. Here's Shaq. A rare bank shot for Shaq. It will be East Ball, last touch by the West as a timeout is taken. Three minutes gone by in the second here in Denver. The West by 13. Nine-two run by 
the West. They lead by 13 with three minutes gone by in the second quarter. Well, NBA rivalry week starts Tuesday night on NBA TV as the Lakers host the uh, Celtics. And then Wednesday on ESPN, it is Houston and San Antonio. Crowd about the 19,000 here in Denver. Crowd that includes Cedric the Entertainer, who's been enjoying the festivities throughout the uh, weekend. Rob Reiner is here. Jay Z and Beyonce. Did a great job uh, prior to the introduction of the starting line. So there's Nelly. Doug, did you say Meathead and the, the hip hop? <laughs> Was that a group in the. In the exactly right. no. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> Wallace trying to give it back. Instead, it goes back to the West. Tried to throw it to you, Marv. I, you were open, but you didn't really come uh, to the ball. I, uh, my hand, I've lost it. <laughs> Strictly right hand. You're inferring that you once had it. No, that's true. Thank you, Steve. It's hurt. Nowitzki up front with Yao and Lewis. And uh, once again, Shaq able to break it up. Came up with a steal. Here's Gilbert Arenas of the Wizards. And rebounded by Yao. West has dominated off the board. Now 26 to 11, actually 27 to 11 now, and they're shooting 51%. Also four of six from behind that three-point line, so they've got the rebounding, they've got the inside-out attack, and that's why they have this 13-point lead. Antoine Jameson of the Wizards making his first appearance. Paul Pierce of the Celtics coming on for the first time. So Drudis Ogowski is now the only player who hasn't been in. Remember, last year he only played four minutes in this game, so like to see him get a little more involved in the action here tonight. Here's O'Neal. Rebounded by Lewis. McGrady from way downtown. Handled by Jameson. Combination of Antoine Jameson and Gilbert Arenas and Larry Hughes been sidelined by injury, revitalizing the Wizards. Nice move off the dribble by Grant Hill. Boy, Gilbert Arenas is having a sensational year, and you see Grant there. That's a part of his game, starting to get back a little bit, that attack of the basket. Been a jump shooter a lot early in this season. That really had to reinvent his game, didn't he, Doug? And his jump shot is better than ever. Hill from Wade. Wayne Wade setting it up with the lob. There's a little flashback of Grant Hill, that explosive power. He said he's just now starting to get his legs. He doesn't have his stamina. He says he still thinks he can become a lot better. Nowitzki with some room. Yes. When he gets an open shot, if he misses it, you know, you're sort of shocked. This guy is such a, a magnificent shooter. Dirk now averaging 27 a game. Third and scoring behind Allen Iverson and Kobe Bryant. Jameson. Nowitzki starts the break. Here's Allen with the lob for Lewis. Back tap. Wade is on it. He has Shaq on the left side. Goes to Hill. Back to Shaq. Oh! Shaquille O'Neal whipping by Ray Allen. I always love when Shaq, when he dunks or does something, the way he goes back down the floor. And the guy is, is such a, a great teammate. He's such a great guy for the NBA, isn't he? I mean, he's yes, he so wonderful with fans and teammates. I like the aftermath of this dunk. Now, if you just watch this dunk, you know, Shaq dunks it, and then watch it as he saunters back down the floor. He just sort of gives it the old shoulders, and, you know, it wasn't too much there, you know? <laughs> he picks it up a little bit. <laughs> Foul on Wade, putting Yao Ming at the line. Once again, Yao, the leading vote-getter for the, the All-Star game. The first-ever number one pick to come from an International Basketball League and it appears that Jeff Van Gundy has changed his philosophy in terms of uh, Yao Ming and Tracy McGrady. Yeah, you know when I was in there the last time and, and talked to Jeff He'd started out most of his games four or five touches to Yao Ming to get him going and he got off to slow starts He's sort of gone away from that a little bit Tracy McGrady's been much more active early and you can see the results Yao looks much fresher now than I thought he did six weeks ago. He's playing a little bit more spring in his legs and Mark, remember when we were in Dallas for that game, he had had a talk with Ben Gundy as Pierce knocks down the jumper. And Ben Gundy said, look, Tracy, I need you to be more aggressive. Remember, he had 48 that night, and his season has been totally different ever since. On the subject of Jeff Van Gundy with uh, Jeff's brother Stan coaching the East here, they are the first ever brother combination in the history of the, the NBA All-Star game. Here is Wayne Wade on the alley-oop. 
for Grant Hill. Oh, we going right into it. It's a uh, pickup ball, man. <laughs> Win it already. Hey, yo. You tired, man? Are you tired? Come on, man. First time out, we down, man. We got to go. Can't breathe out here, man. Right there, get back. Ah! There you go. Oh, that uh, high altitude of the Rocky Mountains. Steve, when you're when you're back here in Denver, do you find yourself lightheaded? <laughs> <laughs> I always find myself lightheaded, Mark. <laughs> no matter what city I'm in. Well, Zadrunas Ilgauskas has checked in, so... Rick Popovich, Stan Van Gundy have used their complete rosters here in this first half as planned. Shot clock down to four, which is rare. Here is Ginobili. And the long rebound fielded by Iverson. A Grady back. Iverson whips right by him and draws the foul. You know, when I listen to that sound, I just can't think of Allen Iverson ever getting yeah. tired. Yeah. I mean, this guy has got more energy. I think he could play two games. No. But it is a factor. You know, when you come oh, yeah. up here to play, I, I always felt that it's that first burst, that first three or four minutes, and you feel like you can't get any air. Once you get that second win, you're fine. Steve was gasping during our on-camera opening. <laughs> Well, the problem for me when I played, I only played four or five minutes the whole game, so I never had a chance to get my second win. The East in the midst of a 9-3 a run. It is now a six-point game, just under six minutes remaining in this first half. Kevin Garnett is back. Oh, Iverson with the steal and fouled by Lewis. That's going to be a clear path. Yeah, clear path, one shot in the ball. I've always felt like when you were coaching again against Allen Iverson, you wanted him to have to guard the ball. When he was off the ball, he totally disrupted your game. He could come from the corner and go all the way to the top and intercept the pass, and you saw him read that play in the passing lane, and he's so quick. But that's where he picks up all of his steals. Allen Iverson, the MVP of the 2001 All-Star Game in, in Washington. He's won three scoring titles, trying to make it number four this year, averaging 29.9. Let's go to David Aldridge for more on Allen Iverson. Marv, you know, Allen Iverson's going to turn 30 years old in June, and I don't think there's any guy on this floor that's matured more in the last few years. He said that he used to be bitter about always being in the public eye, but now he realizes that that's his life, and he's enjoying it more and more. As he told me the other day, when I look in the mirror, I'm okay with it. Marv? All right, David Iverson with five points, five assists in this first half. And he was actually the leader on that team in Athens. He was the voice of reason with all those younger players as they were trying to find a way to win that gold medal. But uh, you have to admire, you know, Marv, you and I did the game in Washington, D.C., the, the finish that he put on in that game to win that MVP trophy. That was one of the better games. I think it sort of led to Dikembe Mutombo being traded for later on in that year as the Philadelphia 76ers went to the, to the uh, NBA Finals. Yes, uh, Dikembe very impressive in that game. Isn't that amazing how a what performance can show a coach that a guy may have a little more than he thought? And that coach, as it turned out, was Larry Brown. Right. No, I think he'd had a few other good performances before that, Marv. I mean, Dikembe was well established at that point, but I do understand your point. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. Well, it kind of drove it home. Yes, yes. It impressed it him. It was right in front yes. of his eyes. There you go. Paul Pierce. You are lightheaded. You know? <laughs> Trying to get my second win. All right, here's Carter for three. Vince Carter of the New Jersey Nets, who averages 22 per game, and as we discussed earlier, has just turned it around since coming over from the Toronto Raptors, the East in the midst of a 19-3 run, looking to add to it. Iverson went over the head. Jameson able to save it. Here's Pierce. Yes! So the East has taken a five-point lead. Well, the great thing about an all-star game is a 20-point deficit in the second quarter is maybe like two or four in the regular season. It means nothing. We've seen an 18-point swing here. West led by as many as 13. Coming up on three and a half remaining in this first half. Here is Ilgauskas. Yes. Talking about Grant Hill coming back from injuries. How about Zadrunas Ilgauskas, who's been healthy these last three years? 
He's broken each of his feet at least twice. 17-0 run now by the Eastern Conference All-Stars. They lead by seven. Three and a half remaining in this first half. The East red hot with a 52-45 lead over the West. Coming up, the Verizon Wireless halftime report with Ernie Johnson along with Kenny Smith, Magic Johnson, and Charles Barkley. Charles has the voice back. Live musical performances by Leon Rimes and uh, Big and Rich. I should say Leon Rimes. So Charles got more than uh, 45 minutes of sleep last night. Apparently. Yes. Good, good for him. Well, you know, everybody's talking about it being Charles' birthday today. The big birthday to me is my grandson Ryan's too today. So I know Charles is being celebrated, but <laughs> I'm celebrating my grandson. Mark. There you go. The East with 17 unanswered points. The last two minutes and 43 seconds, a 23 to three run since the West led by 13. Bash to Kobe Bryant. There's a set play out of the side. That's right. And who delivers the pass? No, none other than Steve Nash. Boy, Greg Popovich absolutely adores Steve Nash. He was just raving about him in our talk. Bryant with the steal that goes behind the back to get it to Murray. Oh, what a play. Kobe Bryant comes up with the steal. And then a beautiful feed to Sean Barry. The unsung hero of all the three All-Stars, really. He's a guy who changed positions, moved from the small forward to the power forward, one of the leading rebounders in the league, does a lot of the dirty work. It's good to see him here. Paul Pierce, downtown. Here's Jameson. And Nash pushing it. Otto Ginobili. And only with a twister. Oh, 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 what a shot. Mono so excited to be here as an all-star. In fact, he flew his family in from Argentina. Maybe the most grateful all-star I have ever seen as Iverson knocks down the jumper. I had a chance to visit with Mono the other night, and it's just so refreshing to see how happy he is to be here. Say all these segues when we talk about a guy and they're scoring <laughs> on the next play. It's like this is choreographed. On cue. Mano Ginobili, a huge star back home in Argentina, two-time MVP of the Italian League and has blossomed in his third NBA season. For exclusive 2005 NBA All-Star Game post-game coverage, tune into NBA TV. That'll be immediately following the game. The East now leads by one. The West is led by as many as uh, 13. The East... At one point, led by seven. Here's Bryant. Pierce able to poke it away. Duncan try to set the screen. Nash for three. Nogalskis with the save. And back comes Carter. Here's Carter putting. <laughs> Vince Carter goes class to himself. Right back. Kobe Bryant from Amari Stoudemire. So the East now leads by one. The crowd is still talking about that solo dash by Carter. That's the old Tracy McGrady play. I think he's done that four times in All-Star games. Iverson. Allen Iverson has had a terrific first half. Nine points for Iverson. Ginobili spinning on Elgowskis. Here's Pierce, it counts, and the foul. Let's take a look at Vince Carter. As you said, Doug, taking a page out of Tracy McGrady's book, he sees the opening, throws it up to himself. Look how high he jumps. This is ridiculous. My question is, does he get an assist to himself? Does he get a shot attempt and an offensive rebound? How do you score that? We talked about that today. I mean, is it a shot, a rebound, and a, uh, and a score? Or is it an assist and a basket? Who knows? I don't know. We'll have to find we'll that out. Check with the official scores. I believe it's a shot, a rebound, and a score. Not an assist, though. That will count and a foul. So Tim Duncan will head to the line. 
looking back at, at that move by Vince Carter and once again seeing the, the leaping ability of Vince shades of his victory in the slam dunk competition back in 2000 and I can just hear Kenny Smith right now saying okay let's challenge Josh Smith that's what he's talking about let's get Vince Carter let's get Jason Richardson let's get all these dunkers Kobe Bryant and let's have a dunk off next year wouldn't be bad to watch would it here is Iverson that shot blocked by Bryant we have received official word on that four as Duncan takes it to the rim. On that move by Carter, it is scored officially as a single shot. Nothing. That's it. No rebound, ah, no shot. Now you wonder okay. about that. Does that mean all the other stuff didn't happen? <laughs> Just like a, a tree pass. falls in the forest? Or yes. What, are you getting philosophical on us? <laughs> <laughs> he passed to himself, but he, but he didn't. Did not happen. <laughs> Iverson. One on the shot clock. Pierce not able to hit from downtown. As time runs out in this first half with the East leading the West, 61-59. The high point man is Tim Duncan, 5 of 7, 11 points. Allen Iverson with 9 points and 8 assists. Vince Carter had the play of the game. He has 8 points. Let's go to Craig with the answer. Well, where did you find the answer to catch your breath? Earlier you said you couldn't get it. Next thing you know, you have nine points, eight, three, eight assists. Don't matter. I still can't uh, find my breath. It's tough playing out here with this, this thin air. I knew it was going to be. I hadn't played in a couple of days, so I know my teammates at home shocked to see me breathing like this, but it is what it is. Your teammate, Doug Gallon, says Allen Iverson never runs out of breath. No, no, I mean, I, I usually don't. If you throw the ball up, I'm all right, but right now I'm struggling. <laughs> what about the play by Vince Carter? Your comment being on the court when you saw that. I mean, it was just a great play. It was something um, that I really expect from him, though. You know, um, you don't ever know what he's going to do, but you always expect something big. All right, thanks a lot. Good first half. Allen Iverson leading the comeback. Nine points, eight assists. And we'll be back with a halftime report. EJ in the game from Drew. Wireless halftime report continues coming your way live from Denver, where Kenny just cannot get that save a horse, ride a cowboy. Too hey, out man. Of his, I grew out up in New York head. City on that same type of music. <laughs> right on the streets of New York. It took Listen, you home tonight, didn't it? I, I got to say something, man. Go ahead, say it. America's got to get over the Janet Jackson team. Because I had to suffer through Paul McCartney. Oh, to suffer through Paul McCartney. Come on, Paul McCartney's an icon. Yeah, that, that just means you're old. <laughs> and, and you know. And tonight I had to suffer through Leanne Rand and, and Big, oh, big yeah, and Rich. Now be nice, Charles. It's, it's your birthday. A, be hey, nice. Listen, I'm not a country music person. Well, save a horse, ride a cowboy, and watch the highlights. And talk about what you saw in hey, the listen, first half here, guys. And listen, do country music. Get some now play. Right. Be that as it may, on the people of LeBron James to Allen Iverson magic. Well, you know what? Allen played very well. And uh, he set the tone for the East. And then Vince Carter really took over and, and did his thing. I tell you, that off the glass slam dunk with one hand was amazing. Yeah, you mean this one right here? Half man. That's amazing again. <laughs> oh, you know, it, it tell you what it, it's amazing what it changed the series. That must be the new sack yeah, It's yeah, for you, Billy. Um, you know, big things are happening down on that base. Oh, oh, exactly. <laughs> so it's a 61-59 game. You were sitting up here saying, boy, the East better slow this down because they're down 13 or they're going to get run out of the building. And then they go on a 17 nothing run. Yeah, it seems like when the West got the big lead, they just kind of shut it down. But if you look at it, Irv is right. Allen Iverson played a great first half. He got the tempo sped up, and that's the difference. No matter how many great centers and power forwards there are in the world, the All-Star game is Magic Nose is a guard game. I don't care if it's a junior high school All-Star game or a high school or an NBA. Guards control the game and control the tempo, and that's what Allen Iverson was able to do and get everybody involved, and then the big men don't have to touch the ball. 61-59 is the halftime score. What do you look for in the uh, third quarter and in the fourth here, Magic? I look now for, uh, I think Kenny said it earlier, that uh, Allen Iverson is going to go for the MVP or him or Vince Carter. And then the West, they showed their domination early and seemed like they just pulled back. But uh, I look for a close game. 
and uh, and a good open floor game. I hope that the game is played like the last three minutes of the half because you saw both teams in transition doing very well. And I just hope whoever put the halftime together, they're getting their, <laughs> they're getting their resume ready. Only one player in double figures, and that is... Tim Save Duncan of the West. Hey, this is a hip hop weekend. Save <laughs> a horse, man. Uh, by the way, the East. Y'all think this is a NASCAR race? Leading 61. <laughs> this ain't no NASCAR <laughs> race. By the way, Jeff this Gordon. This is a hip hop Jeff weekend. Jeff Gordon won the day. I didn't realize that. It's uh, only Daddy on the front I've got to get this, this is, done. This Shaq has eight weekend. points and two rebounds. <laughs> and big now he's making some big noise. Courtesy of VCast from Verizon Wireless. The big fella is coming to your phone. Here he is to tell you about it. Welcome back to the Pepsi Center, Denver, Colorado. Marv Albert, Steve Kerr, Doug Collins, Craig Sager, David Aldridge. As we head to the second half, it's the East 61 and the West 59. But looking back at this uh, first half, the most memorable play of the half pulled off by the New Jersey Nets, Vince Carter. And this was out of the pages of Tracy McGrady, who did it twice in all-star competition. Here is Tracy with the pass to himself off glass. Yeah, actually, Vince is distant cousin, so maybe this is something in the family, but this is the kind of play that fans come to see. I mean, look at this tonight. He gets up so high, and he is so strong, and this arena just lit up when he made that play. As for the first half, the West at one point led by as many as 13. The East led by as many as seven. It's a two-point game right here. Well, Marv, it was really the rebounding. The first 15 minutes, the West 27 to 11 on the boards. They're up 13. And in the last nine minutes, the East leads on the boards 12 to 5. And they end up with a 15-point run there to end the half. So it's rebounding really that's been the, the tail of the tape here with both teams. Uh, a look at the uh, stat line, the Jeep game summary. East at 48%, the West 49%. That's uh, customary. You rarely go to the free throw strike in all-star play. 23 assists for the West and uh, 16 for the East, led by Allen Iverson, who has eight 13 turnovers committed by the West. That allowed the East to get back into it. And the West has had the edge off the boards, uh, 32 to 23. At the 17 straight run, by the East, got them back into it overall, a 23 to 3 spurt. And so it is a, a two point lead here at the half, the East 61, the West 59. Let's check in with Craig. Well, at halftime, Greg Popovich told his team that offensively they need to move the ball better. They got off to a good start, but he said you have to change sides. They kind of went to a, a, the first guy shooting the ball in the second quarter. He also said that Kevin Garnett and Tim Duncan, who played just nine minutes in the first half, he plans to rest them throughout the entire fourth quarter. Kevin Garnett bothering a little bit by knee tendonitis and Tim Duncan an ankle, and he had a hip injury. So we may see the best of Duncan and Garnett here in the third quarter, and they have planned to rest them in the fourth. Although I would think if it's a close game, there will be temptations. <laughs> well, remember Popovich said before the game, it's the ultimate test of discipline for him as a coach. Can he keep these two guys out of the lineup? All right, here's Kobe Bryant off the steal. Tim Duncan, nice ball movement. And the West has tied it. Well, with that said, if that's going to be the case, then I think it'd be imperative for the West to try to get a little bit of breathing distance here in this third period with these two guys playing. Both teams back to their starting lineups. The East with Grant Hill, Vince Carter, Shaquille O'Neal on the front line. Allen Iverson and LeBron James in the backcourt. Foul on Bryant, his second. And here's that strange matchup we had at the beginning of the game. Tim Duncan guarding Vince Carter out on the perimeter. Remember he started out the game with a three because Duncan is so used to guarding the basket. Shot clock is down to three. Hill. The West with their starting lineup. Kevin Garnett, Tim Duncan, Yao Ming up front. Kobe Bryant, Tracy McGrady at the guards. Here is Kobe. And that pass deflected. He thought he was fouled. Kobe still looks a little rusty, doesn't he? I mean, he missed a, a good portion of the season, 14 games with the ankle injury, and he's still struggling a little bit out there. He, he looks a little heavier he does than look the last bigger. time I saw him. I agree. 
Brady looked like he was going to go behind the back, and it's tipped home by Duncan. There's the rebounding once again. This is the this is the rebounding group that dominated the first part of the game, which gave the West the big lead. 15 points for Tim Duncan. Seven of nine for the field. Here's James for three. LeBron James, who has come so far with that perimeter shot since his rookie year. He's improved from 41% last year as Garnett gets the dunk to 49 this year. And you know, watching him, I, I see such better balance with that jump shot. He's, he's got wide, a wider base. He's not fading away. Remember last year, Doug, he chewed that Michael Jordan fade away, but he, wasn't, he didn't have a foundation to his jump shot. He's really building it now. O'Neal with the head fake. O'Neal fighting position. Well, he looks quick. He, he has gotten better as the season got on. It's gone on. He got off to a little bit of a slow start, but his numbers are just picking up dramatically. Shaq has 10 points. McGrady, yes. Apparently it's deflected and hit underneath the, the backboard. West off 67, 66, two and a half gone by in the third quarter. Carter for three. Vince Carter has done it from inside, from outside. He now has 11. Doug, you talked about Ray Allen shooting that three so easily. Vince Carter makes it look so smooth, too. He's just so strong and athletic. He just flicks that ball from 28 feet. It's so simple for him. Alice McGrady, Hawk, the official Ken Power went down. He's all right. Hill off the rebound. Hill having difficulty controlling the dribble and stepped out. You know, he talked about that yesterday, that he doesn't have a great handle on the ball yet. When, when I coached Brandon Detroit, he was my point guard and one of the best in the league. And he's still trying to get that handle. He said his stamina's not quite there. Doesn't feel as good with the basketball yet. Garnett over James. Six points for Kevin Garnett of the Minnesota Timberwolves. It's going to be interesting to watch Minnesota, Doug, down the stretch here with Kevin McHale coaching the team now. They're playing with a lot of passion, a lot of fire, but they've got a long way to go. We talked with the Kevin the other night doing the Minnesota to Cleveland game as Garnett takes it to the rim. We asked Kevin if he checked with some of his former teammates or former coaches before he took the job as uh, head coach following the departure of Cliff Saunders and he said yes I did and I said what did he what did he say what did they say and he said are you nuts becoming a head coach <laughs> well he said I, I know it's not one of the creme de la creme jobs in the NBA coaching but Flip Saunders a wonderful coach and did a great job there at Minnesota he's going to end up somewhere you know that Wherever he wants, I think. Absolutely. He's probably going to be number one on everybody's list. Yeah, he's a brilliant coach. He and Phil Jackson, the two out there everybody's speaking about now. McGrady off the rebound, finding Garnett. It counts and the foul. You know, Marv, just to follow up on that Minnesota going in now, you know, it's interesting. They were the number one seed last year in the East. If the playoffs started today, they would not be in. The Lakers are in the eighth spot. It's going to be interesting to see which one of those two teams I think wins because I think you see Houston's going to be in Memphis, Dallas, Sacramento, Phoenix, Seattle, and uh, San Antonio. So that eighth spot to me is the one that's open. And don't count Denver out because Denver has a better home schedule coming up. Although they're under 500 right now, they played a lot more road games. That will take its, that will change in the second part of the season. And since George Carl took over, the Nuggets have won seven of 11, foul on Duncan. Talking about the Lakers a moment ago. For more on that, let's go to David Aldridge. Marv, you mentioned it, and, Phil, and uh, Doug mentioned it as well. The Lakers have the eighth spot in the West, and they want to make sure that they maintain that. I'm told that owner Jerry Buss has mandated that his team make the playoffs this year. And to that end, the Lakers have been looking at a number of possible trades. Now, one trade that everybody has been talking about here during All-Star Weekend that they have heard and that I've heard also from sources that was at least discussed was Lamar Odom going to Sacramento for Peja Stojakovic and Bobby Jackson. Now both the Kings and the Lakers, when contacted, denied that such talks took place, which usually means they took place, guys. <laughs> Let's see, from the Lakers' point of view, I can certainly understand that because he has two similar 
players. Oh, Bryant gets it down low to McGrady with Kobe Bryant and Lamar Odom. Yeah, you know, I never felt like when they were playing together that they ever got in sync. Lamar Odom needs the basketball on top of the floor to make some plays in the post, and he didn't get it much with the Kobe did a lot of dominating in the basketball, and they really haven't played much together this season because of Kobe's injury. Of course, as you guys know, for every hundred trades that are discussed, about one of them actually goes through. So who knows? This could be just conjecture at this point. Is that a slap at David Aldridge? <laughs> You know, you, you are you going to throw me under the bus, or I mean, it was merely a statement of, that I think is true. I think Doug would agree, but feel free. Go ahead. Just try to get you in a little trouble here. <laughs> All right, Shaq to the line where he has struggled. Maybe you ought to nickname Marv the Agitator. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's got a nickname here this week. We can be the Agitator. Well, we have the Czar of the Telestrator. Right. Now we have the Czar of Agitation. There you go. You know, with the absence of the Czar. There's a need for them oh, yes. somewhere. And you know what? We really got to talk about uh, Mike Fratello, the job he's done down there in Memphis, taking over for Yubi Brown and how well that team has played. Gasol has been hurt, Bonzi Wells, James Posey, and they've played great basketball. Kobe Bryant. So Kobe with the reverse, and the West now leads 77 71. Steve Nash has checked back in. Greg Popovich pulling Yao Ming. Off balance three offered up by LeBron James. And here is McGrady. I've never seen a good shooter ever scissor his legs like that, like, like Tracy does on a shot. Iverson. Yes. Allen Iverson, 13 points along with eight assists. I think McGrady and Vince Carter both do that little scissor kick, and some of these guys, Doug, are so athletic. And speaking of athletic, watch this. LeBron James taking it to the rim to bring the East within two. 11 points for LeBron in his first All-Star game. Well, it looked like the West was getting a little cushion. They pushed it to six. Back-to-back -back baskets by the East. Sloppy play here. LeBron James getting in the passing lead. One of the league leads in steals. Finishing it off. Powerful. Mature. This guy frightening. The 2005 NBA All-Star Game is brought to you by Heineken. It's all about the beer. Heineken. And by Jeep Trail Rated Capability. Only in a Jeep 4x4. Friday, March 11th. Who is he? My name is Gladiator. Father to a murdered son, husband to a murdered wife, and I will have my vengeance. Three nights in a row. Gladiator, starting March 11th at 8 on TNT. We know drama. We're back in Denver. The West is led by as many as 13. Turnaround by the East of the second quarter. It's now a two-point game with 6.18 left in the third. Another look at the various personalities have turned out for All-Star Weekend. That is Chris Tucker. Vivica A. Fox. Terrell Owens of the Philadelphia Eagles. And Pop Daddy with a shack <laughs> shoe, or is that an oversized cell phone? <laughs> All right, let's check in again with David Aldridge. David? Hey, guys, with Dwayne Wade here. Wade, how, how have you enjoyed your first All-Star experience? Oh, it's been great. It's been everything uh, that I ever dreamed it would be. And uh, this, this is icing on the cake. We get to play an All-Star game in front of everybody. I'm just having fun. What's better, the playing or the hanging out? Uh, the playing is better. That's what we, that's what, um, that's what we do, um, play basketball. But the hanging out is great. You get to hang out with people that, you know, you grew up watching, uh, people that you see on TV all the time, so it's great. Is there any one guy whose shoes you definitely want after the game? Uh, if I could pick somebody too, I definitely won't. I'd take uh, AI. Why? Uh, I mean, just because I got too much respect for him. Um, he's, a, he's a warrior, and um, you know, I'd like to, to have his shoes. Dwayne, thanks very much. Good luck the second half. Back to you, Mark. All right, a wonderful second season for Dwayne Wade, who has averaged 24 points, seven assists. Garnett able to get inside on the West with a 79 77 advantage. Wayne Wade called by his teammate Shaquille O'Neal, Flash. And uh, they have teamed up to lead the Miami Heat to the best record in the Eastern Conference. Here is Iverson. And back comes Bryant. Bryant and Nash now work the backcourt for the West. Bryant with a driving hook. Handled by O'Neal. 
LeBron James batting it away. Able to save it. Now Pierce backs it up. Jermaine O'Neal has returned. O'Neal, that's Jermaine, along with Shaquille O'Neal on the front line with Paul Pierce. LeBron James out on Iverson in the backcourt. That will count as a goal, Ted. You know, Mark, seeing Paul Pierce out on the floor makes me think of the Eastern Conference race. That third spot, whoever goes, wins the Atlantic Division. And we see the drive here by Jermaine O'Neal, another team that would like to find a way to get back into the playoffs with all the injuries and the suspensions. But that third spot's going to be so vital. You'll play six, even though you wouldn't have the home court advantage. But eight gets one, which would be Miami. You do not want to have to do that. So winning that Atlantic is very important. Here's McGrady. Looked like there was some contact. Well, and at the same time, the, the race at the bottom is going to be for six. Every time he's going to be dying to get number six, they'll probably have the home court. That counts in the foul. Beautiful pass from LeBron James to set it up. O'Neal with six points. Well, this is why this guy is so highly regarded around the league. LeBron James is a pass-first superstar, and you see the finish there by Jermaine O'Neal. But it's so rare to have a guy that athletic who thinks pass-first. You know, most guys are, are a little less athletic, and they have to pass. He can do whatever he wants. He still thinks pass. Well, think about Jermaine O'Neal. You talk about respect these young players have for this game. He could have broken Reggie Miller's Indiana scoring record this year. He had a chance to do that. Took himself out of the game, and he said, you know what? That's Reggie's record. I don't, you know, the game is over here about two minutes to go. He could have, he could have broken the record. But he said, that's Reggie's. He deserves that. I, you know, it says a lot about the respect that these young guys do have for some of these super players through the years. Spano Ginobili just came back, and he's fouled by Jermaine O'Neal. Antoine Jameson checking in for the East, replacing LeBron James. Here comes Gilbert Arenas for Allen Iverson. LeBron with 13 points, seven of the 13 here in the third quarter. James with five rebounds and four assists. Point number five for Manu Ginobili. What a year for Manu sparking Argentina to the gold at the Olympic Games in, in Athens. All-star selection. 27 years old, easily the most popular athlete in Argentina. Pierce to the rim. The East leads by three. Yeah, Ginobili has really changed that Spurs team. And talking to Greg Popovich before the game, as Davinsky knocks down the three, he said, you know what, I've had to learn to live with Manu because my instinct as a coach is to control things, and I've got to let him go because he does so many things well. And you've got to give up a couple of turnovers, a couple of bad plays because he's so effective with what he does. Game tied at 84, just under four minutes remaining in this third quarter. Pierce. And last touched by the East. See Nash so anxious to get the ball, wants a break up court. Well, what I love about a good push up the floor, like Nash just did, it's Ginobili throws it out of bounds. There's one of those plays you were talking yeah, about. Yeah, <laughs> other than that. <laughs> but when you push the ball up the floor, you know, Doug, even if nothing's there, now you got about 20 seconds to run your offense. And you'll see Nash do that every play with the Suns. And even when they don't have that quick two, they've got plenty of time to work the clock and get a good shot. Grady to the crossover. McGrady lost the handle. And the ball back to the east. And I think when you look at Phoenix, they're one of the few teams that runs even after the other team scores. They're always going to keep the pressure on you so you can never relax. Did you see that move by McGrady? That, that was a page out of Ginobili's book. He's popularized that move now, and you see more and more guys trying that. Their little crossover with the same hand. And O'Neal getting inside. It counts, and he draws the foul. So Jermaine will head to the line. Foul on Nowitzki. Now Tracy McGrady will sit down. And Ray Allen makes his return. Jermaine O'Neal looking to complete the three-point play. And he does. Ten points for Jermaine. Eight of the ten here in the third. The East with a three-point advantage. Nowitzki lost the dribble. And a timeout is called by Stan Van Gundy. Just under three to go 
In this third quarter, the East 87, the West 84. All right, here it is, guys. A special all-star edition of Steve Wonders brought to you by, by Bud Light. Although Steve, you've been so busy, so many activities yeah. all-star week. Have you had time to wonder? I, I'm having a very difficult time thinking of anything. They're working me like a dog here, but I was wondering. We're here, here all weekend. It's been wonderful here in Denver. Last time the all-star game was here was in 1984. You know what I wondered? I wondered what happened. What did happen? Well, the East won 154-145. <laughs> Isaiah Thomas was the MVP, scored 21 points all in the second half, had 15 assists, and of course, Magic Johnson, as you would expect, had a wonderful game, 22 assists in the loss. You know, Denver is also where the introduction of All-Star Saturday started. And a lot of people remember Larry Nance of the Phoenix Suns beating Julius Irving to win the slam dunk championship. That was an upset. He dunked two balls. You remember that? Yes, I sure do. Unbelievable. Casey Jones coaching the Eastern squad to victory in Denver back in 84. Frank Layton, the coach of the West. O'Neill stripped by Nowitzki. Just under three minutes to play in the third. The East with an 87. 84 lead. Ray Allen, Steve Nash, Mano Ginobili in a three-guard alignment for the West. The big men are Nowitzki and Stoudemire. They work it around. Nice ball movement. Allen for three. And back comes Pierce of the Boston Celtics. Here is Gilbert Arenas going glass. He's had a magnificent year for Washington. When Larry Hughes got hurt, he picked up his numbers. The team is 30 and 22 right now, battling Cleveland for a home court advantage in the Eastern Conference playoffs. What a wonderful year it's been in Washington with he and Antoine Jameson. You know, Larry Hughes had a great shot oh, yes. at making the all-star team, too. Unfortunately for him, the injury occurred, but they've got a chance to really make a run here in the East. And O'Neal on a nice setup, so the East now leads by seven points. Ten of Jermaine's 12 points in this third quarter. Allen's pass deflected away, last touch by the East. Let's go to Craig Sager. Craig? Well, remember at halftime, Coach Popovich told us he did not plan to play West Kevin ball, Garnett or Tim Duncan in the fourth quarter. During that last time out, he talked to both of them. He said, you guys are through for the night. Duncan says, you may think I'm through for the night, but I'm not putting any ice on yet. So apparently if it's close to the end, Duncan may change those plans. Guys want to play, Marv. You come here and, you know, you, you think I'll just make a cameo appearance. These guys are great because they're competitors. And you know what I'm thinking? I see Shaq over there resting. I'm seeing him poised for a huge finish here tonight to try to get this East team a victory. Walking foul was called on Pierce. 14 on the shot clock for the West. Tough matchup here for Ilgauskas with the speed of Stoudemire, who kind of bails him out with the fallaway jumper. Wallace just checked back in. His pass intercepted by Nowitzki. Allen on a catch and shoot from downtown. Ray Allen with 12 points. That's his fourth three. So without Garnett and Duncan, assuming they don't play in the entire fourth quarter, I think you're looking at a lot of perimeter shooting down the stretch for the West. I'd look for Ray Allen to be out there quite a bit. Elgowskis is fouled. By Stoudemire. You know, it's going to be interesting to see what Cleveland does. You know, LeBron James is really lobbying to keep uh, Zadrunas Ogalskis. They also want to have cap space to add a shooter to that team. As we know, see, we've talked about them needing another shooter. There's been discussions of Ray Allen, Joe Johnson, Michael Redd, maybe Larry Hughes, guys who are free agents. But they need to keep this big man in the middle. So they're going to have to manage this cap in such a way they can add and help LeBron on the perimeter. But at the same time, this guy has been great since he's come back. He's averaging a career-high 17 and a half points this season, and he's been healthy, and he gives them a low post presence in the East. Minute remaining in this third quarter, the East up by six. Well, he was looking for a cutter. There was no cutter. <laughs> there was actually some defense. A couple guys stopped Wallace's uh, roll to the basket. Of course, the turnover. 20th turnover committed by the West. The East with 11. 
Jameson not able to hit. That comes Allen, picked up by Pierce. Allen accelerates, and that was a pass. That was not a shot, although it did not work. Hilgaus just with a little skip, got away with it. Hit, hit, <laughs> top of the moves. Tell you what, he's a little more athletic than people think. We've seen him make some acrobatic moves. And Nash gets it right back. It's the East 95, the West 89. Well, they're going to open the floor here for Gilbert Arenas, last possession. Nobody's been able to keep this guy in front of him all season long. So if you give help, look for somebody to spot up and shoot the three, either Jamison or Paul Pierce. Final seconds of the quarter. Here is Arenas. Three quarters complete here at Denver. The East 95 and the West 89. The East ending the third quarter on a 24 to 12 run. Denver, Colorado. Tonight's aerial coverage being presented in high definition where available. Brought to you by the Air Force. Now look at Eastern Conference head coach Stan Van Gundy of the Miami Heat. His first all-star game. Longtime assistant under Pat Riley. Took over as the head coach last season following an 0-7 start. Miami fell 11 games under the 500 mark. They turned it around. They went 17 of their final 21, they finished fourth in the East, and as this fourth quarter gets underway, Gilbert Arenas hits from downtown, so he's beginning to show some signs. And how about Miami this year as they completely restructure the club off the uh, trade involving Shaquille O'Neal, and uh, that tip will count. The basket counts, says the outside official, Bill Spooner. And a loose ball foul is called. You know, Mark, when you've seen the coaches' influences in a game like this, is after timeouts, coming out of quarter breaks, you could see the play set up that Stan Van Gundy sets up for Gilbert Arenas. They drive baseline, kick it along that sideline. Play, uh, teams love to make that play, and he hits the three. But at these timeouts, that's where you're going to see it. And then all hell breaks loose for the next 11 minutes. <laughs> And it's a jump ball. The basket counted a moment ago on the tip, and then Ilgowskis away from the ball call for the foul on Marion, so he shot mm. just the the one free throw, and now they'll jump it up. You know, Marv, talking about Stan Van Gundy, can you imagine if you had told him when he was 0-7 a year ago, you'd said, next year, you'll be coaching the All-Star game, and Shaq will be on your team. I mean, he would have thought you were nuts. Sweet dreams. Yeah. Stan talking about how fragile this business is as Wade fires one up, citing Flip Saunders, the coach of the Western squad last year. Minnesota wins 58 games a year ago. And foul is called. It's a loose ball affair once again. It is on Arenas. And you take a guy like Rick Carlisle, who coached the game here last year. You see what's happened to Indiana this year with the suspensions and all that's going on there. Right now, they're not even in the play. I mean, they're not even in the playoffs. Here is Yao Ming, and the rebound handled by Ben Wallace. LeBron James back on the floor, and uh, he's apparently out of bounds or pushed. No, Jack Neese says a push. Foul on Allen. We're getting close to that magical eight-minute mark in an all-star game. That's when the switch gets turned. That's when the coaches start getting guys in and out of games. This last eight minutes is going to be fun. And very shortly, we will see the return of Shaquille O'Neal. He's up by seven. Yao with the block of Wade. Kept alive, though. And here's James. Oh, it's put down by Wallace. Ben Wallace on the follow, and the East opens up. A nine-point lead. Well, when Yao Ming comes over to block a shot, it leaves the basket area wide open. You look at the small lineup the West has out there. They're in trouble on the boards. Here is Yao yeah. off the pass for Marion. Minute and a half gone by in this fourth quarter. Marv Albert, Doug Collins, Steve Kerr, Greg Sager, David Aldridge on the sidelines. Ogalskis and... Uh, <laughs> 
That'll be a jump ball. As we check in with David Aldridge. Well, guys, Doug mentioned earlier about the Zadrunas of Gaskis being a free agent. Talked to him before the game, and he said, look, the one reason, the biggest reason why he wants to stay in Cleveland stands about 6'8", 245. <laughs> <laughs> said that LeBron James gets him two or three layups every game. And he said, for a big guy like me, it's so important to get into a rhythm early, and LeBron does that for me, guys. All right, David. He's controlling that jump ball. Arena's not able to hit a Galskis with the behind the back attempt on the save. But back comes Rashard Lewis for the West, and it's stolen by Wade. Here's Wade with a breakaway. Wade with the reverse stuff. East is making a little push here. Is Greg Popovich going to be able to resist Duncan and Garnett coming back into this game? Marion with the runner. Sean Marion of the Phoenix Suns, averaging 19 points, 11 rebounds, which is a career high. One of three Suns to make the All Star team. And Gilbert Arenas beginning to heat up. He missed his first five shots and now showing signs. I'm probably a little nervous. You know, this is his first time to be here on this kind of stage, but uh, this guy can get a shot anytime he wants to. Oh, yeah, oh, showing <laughs> a little chicanery that did not work. <laughs> <laughs> Laughing his way back down the court. The East in possession. They lead by nine. Kobe Bryant getting set to make his return. James. Looking to go back door, but Wade not able to hang on. Here comes Kobe Bryant. Now, Mark, one of the teams we haven't talked much about today is the Detroit Pistons. Ben Wallace, we saw him with a follow-up uh, dunk a, a couple plays ago, but they are now playing the kind of basketball they played going into the playoffs to win the championship last year, so they're poised to make that run once again. Pistons have won nine of the last ten games. Ginobili for three. Uh, Detroit and Miami really look like the class of the East. Of course, the Cleveland will have something to say about it, but it's looking more and more like a clash between the Heat and the Pistons in May. Gelskis with the pick. So Zadrunas, who a couple of years back in his All-Star debut, saw only four minutes of play, has been a factor. He now has eight points, and Manu Ginobili cuts it to a nine-point East lead. Well, it'll be interesting also with Miami, so much speculation that Alonzo Mourning is, if he passes physical, will be joining that team to give them another presence in the lane going into the playoffs. Blocking foul on Ginobili trying to draw the charge, which he usually does so well. Timeout called with eight and a half to play in this fourth quarter. Welcome back to the 2005 All-Star Game. When you think of All-Star Games, you have to think of fashion. Because the All-Star Game, for many memorable moments, with the shoes worn by the All-Star players. Let's take a step back and look at some of those. Scotty Pippen in 1994 with the red Nike Air Maestro. And then Chris Webber, 2002, with the Chrome Data Supremes. Shaq in 2003 with his own brand Shaq shoes that by the way actually did light up and then we had Yao Ming in 2003 with the baby blue Nike Shock Supremacies and a year ago Ron Artest actually wearing two different shoes where we focus on the data sprees and then tonight we also have a little fashion here LeBron James with his new Air Zoom Generation 2 Yao Ming resurrecting the Reebok pump and that Gilbert Arenas with the Gil Adidas but the best shoe of all I think is the one we see right there this is Shaq's shoe and Shaq it looks like there's a radio in here does it really work and who came up with this idea well there's something I came up with everybody knows I'm a, I'm a weird guy so this is Shaq's shoe phone it's a very operable phone we should be getting a call if as a matter of fact it's a matter of fact it's ringing right now I want you to answer that the world know that it's a real thing. That's a Shaq shoe. You got to talk in the ball. Oh, right there, the mouth. P. Diddy. It's P. Diddy. He has the other one. That's right. It is P. Diddy. He's running up your long distance chargers unless you have free roaming. You know what? I like this suit today. You're looking really good. Oh, thanks. What about my shoes? Yeah. Great gators, great belts. You're looking really good. But this phone's an operable phone. You can call me on any time. 
What about this uh, game here? Ace up, 108, 97. Are you through for the evening? It's a fun game. Um, the guys are out here representing the NBA very well. It was a fun event this weekend. This is one of the best all-star games I've attended. I'm very impressed with the young guys like LeBron, Carmelo, uh, D-Wade. And uh, I think they're going to do the game very well in the future. Yeah. You've changed the power structure. Our TNT schedule reflects that. We're going to be doing a lot of Miami games, back-to-back -back games in March. You have against uh, Minnesota on the 10th, and then the Lakers on the 17th. What about your playoff per, uh, spur here in the second half, and what do you have to do? Well, we just got to, you know, keep playing consistent, and I think if we do that, then we'll be okay. All right, can I give this uh, shoe over to Meyer? He's got a lot of people he needs to talk to. Yes, of course you can. All right, thanks. Thanks, Craig. Kind of a handy cell phone to carry around. <laughs> It only fits in your car. I mean, see how big that shoe is? What'd you call him? Maxwell Smart? Maxwell Smart. I mean, for each and 86 to show up. Seven and a half remaining in this fourth quarter. The East is taking command. They lead it 108 to 99. Richard Lewis not able to hit from three-point land. Allen Iverson is back. Iverson for Elkowskis. Perhaps an extra step by... By Allen, but got it to Zagrunas Wilgowskis. Ten assists for Iverson. 14.7 rebounds now. So Wilgowskis has quietly worked himself into a nice game. Here's Bryant rejected by Ilgowskis. Now Bryant over James for three. It's an eight point East lead. Ilgowskis not able to handle that pass. Marion for the trailer, Lewis, kept alive by Richard Lewis, and a reset. Well, Bryant decides to fire and hits from downtown. Here we go. That's the reset. Give it to Kobe. If you need a comeback, I don't know if there's a better player in the league to give the ball to than Kobe Bryant. The guys hit more big fourth quarter shots in the last few years than anybody. Seven of ten, 16 points for Kobe Bryant. Iverson. Now with the rebound, Bryant and Ginobili in the backcourt. Yao is up front. Oh, Kobe again from downtown. Yao with Lewis and Marion on the front line, and a foul is called. A, a reach-in foul on Lewis. You know, looks like big Shaq's coming in, Doug. Here's that magic time you talked about, that last spurt. It's a close game. Game's on the line. Now the coaches go with the lineup they think can win. Mayne O'Neal and Shaquille O'Neal check in. Dwayne Wade is back. Ray Allen has come on for the West, as has Dirk Nowitzki and Amari Stoudemire. And uh, Greg Popovich is staying with uh, the thought of resting. Tim Duncan and Kevin Garnett, because both have been playing hurt. The steal by Iverson. It's taken back by McGrady. Here's Bryant with the lob. Oh! Murray Stottlemyre puts it down. The West with it. Three with five and a half remaining in the fourth. And here's Wade right back. He is so explosive. He reminds me like of a running back in football. He's so powerful, low to the ground. Powerful finish. Now McGrady looking to post. Iverson was battling for position and was able to break it up. Timeout called. 519 left. In this fourth quarter, it's a 112-107 Eastern Conference League. Well, we saw some of this at the slam dunk contest last night. Amari Stoudemire grabbing the lob, and look at the reverse. Unbelievable athleticism. Floppy three. Floppy three. Hey, go to work down there, boy. Way to run. Way to run. Hey, Matt, good pass, Matt. There you go, boy. You know, it's always about the game, but for now, no. <laughs> and Kobe Bryant, prominent in this West comeback. Last three possessions, he's hit two from downtown, and he threw an alley-oop to Amari Stoudemire. It's going to be interesting to see the Lakers now down the stretch, Doug, because K Kobe is now back, obviously, missed 14 games, but they've struggled without him. Do they have enough to make that push and secure that eighth playoff spot and hold Minnesota off? I think that he and Lamar Odom are going to have to play well together. That's going to be the key. Then Ron Butler can follow and Chucky Atkins and the rest of that team, Chris Mann. But those two guys have to play well.
Bryant, seven of 11, 16 points, also has six assists. Here's Bryant for three, rebounded by Jermaine O'Neal. Greg Popovich is down there saying, you make all of those down the stretch against us. Why aren't you making them now? Bryant hounding Iverson and is called for the foul. And for the West, their fourth team foul. And now with 5.02 remaining in the fourth quarter, this becomes a regular season yes, type game. Well, you saw the defense that Kobe was playing on Allen Iverson. Look at the difference right now. He's glued to him. Oh, nice fake it. Wade, Wade takes it to the distance. How good is he on that baseline? Seven-point lead for the East. Ten points for Wade. Pass intended for Stoudemire. Here's Wade with Nowitzki back. Nowitzki got a piece of it. Yeah, the defense has picked up noticeably. You're seeing guys rotate over, going for steals, helping. You didn't see any of that the first 40 minutes. He's with 20 on the shot clock. Wild pass and a bad pass thrown by Iverson. Here's Allen taking it to the rim. Allen Iverson has played exceptionally well here tonight. 15 points, 10 assists, but he just flung that one over his head, leading to the bucket. 114-109. The East with the lead as we come up on four minutes to go in this fourth quarter. A friendly rim for Jermaine O'Neal, who has had an outstanding game. He's done his damage in the second half. 14 points in all for Jermaine. His last touch by the East. Kobe able to play it. Here's Kobe on a crossover, setting it up for McGrady. Shaq with the outlet for his teammate, Wade. Wayne Wade lays it home. Superman to flash. That's what we've seen from Miami. And that's why they are one of the favorites in the East, those two players. 118-109. The East on top. Allen. See Shaq come out to, to play Allen. And Stoudemire fouled by Jermaine O'Neal. Very balanced scoring on both sides. You see the leading scorer in the game is Kobe Bryant with 16. Nobody on the East has more than 15. You see the minutes are very evenly displayed. So both coaches, I think, are doing an excellent job of really letting everybody have a chance to show what they can do. Reminder, NBA Rivalry Week starts Tuesday night on NBA TV. Lakers hosting the Celtics. And then on Wednesday on ESPN, it's Houston at okay. San Antonio. Here's Wade. And deflected out of bounds by McGrady. The East has won 33 NBA All-Star games. The West has won 20. However, the West with three straight, four of the last five. Just under three and a half. Remaining on the fourth, Shaquille O'Neal. McGrady saw the opening, puts it off, blast it! <laughs> Save him a finish! Now you would think this would not be the time to pull that play off, but he, he saw he had the, the gap. Wade, Wade again, and draws the foul. I think when you play Dwayne Wade, you've got to get one foot out of bounds. He gets on that baseline. And you can't stop him. And what happens is you get offensive rebounds. He gets that ball up on the rim. Here's McGrady. We've seen it two other times in 2002, in 2002 2004. We saw Vince Carter with a powerful dunk early in the first half. And this is just a sort of a George Gervin finger roll there at the finish. 13 points for Wade. Nine of the 13 here in the fourth quarter. Wade in his second NBA season. Adam Marquette, his first All-Star game. I don't know if anybody knew how good Wade was going to be. There were questions about whether he could play the point guard spot, questions about his outside shooting. He's been absolutely phenomenal for Miami. Bryant not able to hit on the reverse. James for O'Neal. Shot with McGrady looking to avoid Shaquille O'Neal. Nowitzki. Stoudemire coming up short, but last touch 
by the East. Well, you know, Marv, we're going to get a lot of chatter from Shaq if the East holds on to the win. He said yeah, he's going to be the difference. Four out of the last five to the West when I was on the West. I move over to the East, and it looks like we're going to get this one tonight. Philadelphia led by the Red Hot Allen Iverson at New York. Game two of the doubleheader Dallas and Sacramento coverage starting 7 o'clock Eastern time. And with this game winding down, time to start uh, thinking about most valuable player. This might be the most balanced all-star all -star game you've seen in terms of scoring. I mean, you look at Iverson, James, Duncan, and Bryant, all of them very, uh, you know, able to to be the MVP but uh, you know Iverson has 13 points nine assists but he also has four 14 with six turnovers so uh, it'll be interesting to see who is the MVP here today Duncan's got the best number seven for ten from the field as we saw 15 points nine boards but they're gonna lose probably so uh, this is a tough one Wayne Wade has come yes. on late as has Jermaine O'Neal here's Allen yes that's another three that's five from downtown. This game's not over yet. If Ray Allen hits a few more field right. goals, he might be the MVP. That's right. Allen is five of eight from beyond that three-point line. Here comes the West. Allen again from way downtown. Back tap by Novitsky. McGrady passed on the three. Allen in position for three. Oh, that's wide open. He usually doesn't miss that. Novitsky. He draws the foul. Yeah, I spoke too soon. I said this game was over. It's only an eight-point game. There's two minutes to go, and Novitski's going to go to the line, so it's far from over. And it's not like anybody's going to use the clock. I mean, the Eastern's not going to come down and milk <laughs> clock. You know that. I don't think the they're going to go deep no. in four corners right now? No, they're not going to use the <laughs> shot clock. Well, Novitski missed the free throw. Ray Allen missed a couple open threes, trying to carve into this lead. Ray Allen now has 19 points. Five from beyond that three-point line. The all-star game record is six. Mark Price holds it. He hit six in 1993. I think he had five of them in one quarter, if I'm not mistaken. He was on fire that night. The East with a seven-point lead with the basketball. Iverson protecting against Bryant. Here's Wade. Jermaine O'Neal. Kept alive by Wade. Iverson off the hesitation, finding O'Neal, and he's fouled. He got a new clock, but they went right back to the basket, so they're going to keep attacking. They're not going to play the clock. So, Jermaine O'Neal to the line, fouled by Kobe Bryant, the four. On Bryant, both teams are over the foul limit, although this in the end. Jermaine O'Neal quietly's had a nice night, 14 points, five rebounds, six of ten from the floor, so... Just so much balance in this game. I think you have to give the coaches a lot of credit as well as the players. They've really looked to get each other involved in this game. They've been very, very well played. The turnovers have been kept down to a minimum, although the West does have 24 turnovers, which has led to 19 points, which could be the difference in the game. And three of four at the line. The East now leads by eight. West looking for a quick shot. A minute 25 remaining. Allen stopped by O'Neal. He had nowhere to go. Last touch by Shaq. And the West will put it in play. They have 14 on the shot clock. See if they can run an out-of-bounds play here. They probably just put one in during practice, and now they don't get much from that. Mitski trying to set a screen. And not going to bounce by... Wade. Now they reset the clock. Once again, the West with 14 on the 24. It's like Greg Popovich is going to take a timeout, and he carries cards, Marv, with him when he coaches the Spurs, and he has set plays for certain guys that he likes to run in this situation. We'll see what he pulls out, maybe to get a Ray Allen a jumper. Jack, you got Stoudemire. Job, Ben. Not playing hard enough. Come on, Alan, get on the glass, all of you. Let's go. Hey, let's win the two and a half minutes. Don't let it get close. Marv, you got to go the money angle right now if you're Stan Van Gundy. When I, when I was in Cleveland coaching the game, I, we were down 20 in the first half, and I 
was in a timeout, and I said to Michael Jordan, I said, Michael, you realize the winners get 12,000, the losers get six. And his eyes got real big, and the 20-point <laughs> lead was, was evaporated immediately, went on to win. Really, it was more said because the coaches get the, 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 the same amount, and that difference is a lot more to the coaches than it is to the players. Sometimes you got to go to the money routine, though. You don't, you don't think Michael was having trouble paying the rent at no, that time? I think that he was six okay. wasn't that big of a deal? I think he was all right. Doug cutting right to the core <laughs> from a motivational <laughs> point of view. Here's McGrady trying a three-pointer, kept alive by Stoudemire. Allen challenged O'Neal, and Iverson is on it with just under one minute remaining. In the game, the East 123 and the West 115. And now Iverson playing the clock. Here's Iverson trying to throw off glass. Did not work, but and that that did not work. Iverson was out of bounds. He had stepped on the line. So the ball back to the West. We're down to 40 seconds. Doug, I see you staring at your MVP ballot. You don't know who to take, do I you? I have no idea who to pick as the MVP. I mean, the East has been so balanced, and I want to vote for a guy on the East who's won it. Here's, here's a Ray Allen once again trying to tie that record. Mark Price with six three-pointers and an overtime. Look out, Bryant called for the foul and able to help uh, Iverson back on his feet. No player with 20 points. The high man in the game, Ray Allen with 17. The last time that a player did not score 20 or more in an All-Star game, 1981. The high man, Dennis Johnson and Paul Westfall, they each had 19. Doug about to prepare his ballot, looking <laughs> puzzled. I'm waiting for that stat sheet to change, and, and it's not changing. Just vote for Ralph Nader. Just throw his name on there. Yes. We're down to 15 seconds. Wayne Wade was dribbling it out. Shaq with the three. Come on, Shaq. Here it is. <laughs> So the East has defeated the West 125 to 115 to put an end to that three-game Western Conference winning streak. And we'll be back with the announcement of who exactly has won the Most Valuable Player Award, and we will have the presentation after this. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in thanking the city of Denver and beautiful state of Colorado, together with the Denver Nuggets and Cronky Sports, for doing such a great job hosting our All-Star Weekend. I also want to thank all the NBA players and WNBA players and NBA legends and the NBA family who are around this community doing the things that NBA players and the whole NBA family do all of the time. I'd also like you to give these All-Stars a hand for the effort today and all weekend. But tonight, tonight, the veteran, the star of stars, Allen Iverson, is the MVP with 15 points, 10 assists, and 5 steals. All right, AI, the last time the East won this game, you were the MVP. How's this feel again? Feels great. Um, first of all, I want to just thank God, because uh, without him, none of this would be possible. I want to thank my teammates um, in Philly. I want to thank my coaching staff in Philly, because without those guys, I wouldn't be here. We heard you earlier in the night saying that uh, you were getting, I don't know if it was lightheaded or a little tired, or a little winded. Things are pretty wide open in the thin air here. Did you get your second win? Definitely. I, I eventually caught it. You know, um, I said at halftime, my teammates was going to joke me when I get home because I never get tired. But I was kind of tired out here today with the thin air. Shaquille O'Neal has said he's the difference maker when he's in the West. The West wins. He's come to the East. How big a difference was the big fella tonight? I mean, it's Shaquille O'Neal, the name alone says enough. I mean, he's the greatest player to ever play this game. And uh, it don't get no better than that.
Allen Iverson, the most valuable player again of the 2005 NBA All-Star Game. You want one more? Yeah, and I want to, I just want to thank uh, my mom, and I want to thank Gary Moore, and um, uh, most of all, I want to thank my wife for taking care of me, and uh, this is for my, my best friend's mother that passed away. Um, this is for her. So, this is for you, Faith Steele. I know you're watching me. Rest in peace. Well said. Thank you very much, Alan, and congratulations to Alan Iverson, the MVP. And we will be back to wrap things up from Denver in just a moment. The East winning over the West by 10.